Flat Earthers are now claiming that the sextant proves the Earth is flat. In fact, Flat Earth High Priest Quantum Eraser is claiming that 2021 is the year of the sextant. And this graphic is their proof. All of these angles here form right triangles where the celestial body is at zenith above the surface of the Earth. And this point down here in celestial navigation is also called the GP or the ground position. And this drawing is their evidence that it can't work on a globe. A bit confused? Well, according to them, if this is no longer a right angle right here, then it just cannot work on a globe. Here's another graphic showing that their understanding of basic geometry is pretty limited. And they even think that since the surface of the globe is curved, then all of these lines must be curved. So celestial navigation would work on a flat Earth. Here you have Polaris at zenith above the ground position. Since both of these are the same angles over here, that means that these triangles are equal and the distance from the ground position to the observer on each side is also the same. And if you took this distance here and made a circle, that would be the same north latitude around the North Pole. And in the case of the sun, moon, or a star, it would be a circle on the surface of the Earth with the ground position as the center of that circle. Now it is basic geometry to understand that this also works on a globe. Here we have the flat Earth model. The only difference in this case, the surface is now an arc, but from the ground position, it is the same distance to each observer on both sides since they see the same angle. And also like on the flat earth, if you extended this line all the way around, it would form a circle that would be a latitude with the North Pole at the center. And if you look down at the top of the globe, you can easily see that all of these latitude circles are centered on the North Pole. And again, just like it was on the flat earth, in the case of the sun, moon, or star, this would form a circle of the same radius on the surface of the Earth, and any position along that circumference would be the exact same distance from the ground position. So again, celestial navigation could work on a flat Earth, and since all of these are right triangles, they are correct in saying that this would be a form of triangulation. All you would need to know is the altitude of the celestial object that you are targeting, and then you could use high school trigonometry. And this is a very simple calculation. The altitude is equal to the tangent of the observed angle times the distance from the ground position to your position. Of course, if we use the 45th latitude for Polaris, we don't even need to make a calculation. We know that the 45th latitude is about 3,112 miles from the North Pole, and since the observed angle is 45 degrees to Polaris, we know the angle up here is also 45 degrees. That makes this an isosceles triangle that has two equal sides. Therefore, we know that Polaris is about 3,112 miles above the flat Earth. Of course, there's a little problem because when we do this calculation for other latitudes, we should get the same answer. But here's the calculation for the altitude at the 60th latitude, and you can see that it is much higher than what we got at the 45th latitude. Here's the calculation for the 30th latitude, which is much lower. Now we can do this another way by calculating for the observed angle by dividing the altitude by the distance. And again, if we use the 45th latitude, we come out with the correct answer of 45 degrees. But again, we have a problem because when we use the same altitude for Polaris and make this observed calculation for other latitudes, it does not match what we actually see. At 60 degrees north, Polaris should be 60 degrees above the horizon, but the calculated angle is 56.3 degrees. At 30 degrees latitude, Polaris should be 30 degrees above the horizon, but it is 36.9 degrees. 
Of course, flat earthers have a solution for this. So on one hand, they're going to tell us sextants and these right triangles only work on a flat earth. But at the same time, they're going to tell us, well, please ignore the fact that the math doesn't support our claim. And there was a recent example of this on Brandon's show. And here's the graphic that they used to explain away the fact that these calculated angles for each latitude do not match the observed angles except here at the North Pole. Also, I'm not certain who drew this diagram, but I do want to thank him for including me as one of the proponents. So let's take a quick lesson because it seems like Brandon is trying to say that this is our model of the flat earth and not his model. This is your model of how Polaris is would works on a flat earth, right? Well, actually, this is the flat earth model of the flat earth because it matches the current model being used by flat earthers to make the claim that sextants only work on a flat earth. So it starts off with this is a purely Euclidean model of angular measurement. Well, that is correct because we use geometry to measure physical shapes and distances. And in this case, we are using right triangles. Therefore, we can use trigonometry. It doesn't take perspective into account. Well, that is incorrect because perspective is dealing with how big an object appears to be or its angular size. Or in this case, it would be how high does Polaris appear to be in the sky from different locations. So we can see here when you're close, Polaris appears to be higher in the sky. And of course, when you get farther away over here, Polaris appears to be lower in the sky. Object remains a consistent distance above the horizon regardless of the observer's distance from the object. Now this shows a real fundamental misunderstanding of how perspective really works. Do I really need to explain this? Perspective does not change the object size. Objects appear smaller as they go off into the distance because as you can see here, when the truck is close, the visual angle is large. When the truck gets farther away, the visual angle is smaller. Is this really that difficult for the flat earth community to understand? and uses an assumed height of 5,000 kilometers. Well, actually, this is a number that has often been used by flat earthers. As I said earlier, this is an equilateral triangle with two equal sides. All you need to do is know the distance from the North Pole to the 45th latitude, and you can estimate the height of Polaris without even making a calculation. And if you think that's wrong, change it to 3,000 kilometers. Of course, now the distance from the North Pole to the 45th latitude is also 3,000 kilometers, and the distance to the equator is now 6,000 kilometers. Of course, you can also change the height of Polaris without changing the distances to the 45th latitude or the equator. But now you have another problem because the observed angle at the 45th latitude does not match what you actually see. And of course, I think we are seeing what the real problem with the flat Earth model is. So again, flat earthers are making the claim that sextants and these right triangles only work on a flat earth. But as we can see in this example with Polaris, when we use these right triangles to make calculations of what we should observe at each latitude, we can see that it does not match what we actually see at each latitude, except up here at the North Pole. So the next time a flat earther tells you that sextants only work on a flat earth, then ask them, what is the altitude of the sun, the moon, or Polaris? I mean, it only requires observations with a sextant, distances from Google Earth, and high school trigonometry. But don't hold your breath waiting for an answer. And just out of curiosity, how come there's no Google searches, books, or classes showing that celestial navigation is based on the flat Earth model? Everything that I have seen always shows that it is based on a globe. In part two, I'll take a look at another excuse. What about refraction?